Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks Wargaming and we are at match day three in the UK Blood Bowl League. It is my Chaos Dwarfs versus a uh, Chaos team. This this is a bit of a slobber knocker, uh, this, this match. It's, uh, it, I enjoyed this one, um, so hopefully you guys will too. Um, again, both these teams are reasonably low uh, team value. Uh, I can't remember the exact skills, uh, so we'll have a look at those in a moment. Let's skip all the coin toss. Right, okay. So, uh, we've got the one claw piece. Uh, had a miss, miss next game player. Uh, so we've got a uh, journeyman in for this match. Uh, when I've stopped moving the players round, uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like we're actually a Chaos Dwarf down. Uh, must have been a missing. Not quite sure what I'm doing with uh, with this setup. I don't remember doing this. Uh, so this is me on offence, and uh, the opponent has put a lot of his high value players on the line of scrimmage, uh, so I've tried to, um, uh, I've tried to get it to being able to punch him with my, uh, my claw pieces, or my claw piece shall I say. Uh, so that's why I've uh, I've built quite aggressively here. Uh, that high kick with that position there, I was actually hoping that the ball might scatter back, and that's a nice start for me. So the ball centaur removes a chaos warrior. That is massive against the chaos team. Uh, opponent decided not to use his apothecary, so that is one down. And another armor break. I think that is already more armor breaks than I achieved in the entire game against Norse last last week. So as I said, I'm just trying to knock down all these high value pieces. Uh, Brody has moved up. Oh no, Brody isn't there. Where's Brody? Maybe it was Brody that was out. Yeah, I think it was Brody that was out. I just took the uh, the both down result there. There was no point in blowing a re-roll on the loner. I'm not particularly bothered if he gets injured because he's not a member of my team. He's just standing in on this one. The ball's reasonably well protected here with the centaur. Um, it, my opponent can get to it, but he wouldn't be able to blitz the ball carrier. Uh, he can just basically tag him up, but I've got lots of players that can uh, equally get back if required, i.e. this centaur with that one. It's always going to be hard to protect the ball with it landing where it did, um, with how aggressively I lined up. Uh, you find with bash teams like this, it does beca uh, become a bit of a just, you know, I punch you, you you punch me, and it becomes a bit of an attritional battle. Position is obviously still important. So again, I'm using blitzes to try and get rid of uh, high value pieces. I think that was a bit of a mistake that I probably realized afterwards. I needed to blitz here uh, so that's why I decided to put the two players here so I could do a uh, a punch with the ball carrier fortunate to get the armor break there as well I would have probably re-rolled that, uh, that block there as well 
I just went for a cheeky uh, two die uphill there. It's my claw piece. He was going to get punched if I hadn't attacked back then. Anyway, uh, so I, I thought I may as well try stuff like that. You can you can get away with it in some respects with with dwarfs against the a player that hasn't got block. I'd like I say I'd rather knock myself over than than take claw hits. I'm not sure if that was a mistake by my opponent. I think it probably was. I'm not sure he wanted to really dodge there and then just move somebody back. That must have been a bit of a misclick. They happen in the game. So he is blitzing. This is squeaky bum time. Claw player on claw player. But uh, it, it appears that both claw players are as ineffective as each other. He could have actually blitzed the ball carrier there for a one die if he hadn't have blitzed up here. Again, I could have recovered it, but decided not to do that. It's a bit of a sloppy start for me at the moment, to be honest. Being quite fortunate in some respects. So I'm trying to shore up the ball carrier a bit. Giving him somewhere to hide. Cheeky one die against the player without block. I followed up there to stop this guy being easily um, sort of pushed, so he could he could stand up and blitz this. Whereas with that guy there, it'd be a one die. So he's got to remove this player first of all. Which he, he doesn't manage to do. Uses the reroll. But hits the player that I thought he would. Just so he can stand next to the ball. But fortunately I've got lots of bodies around him now. And I've been quite fortunate with my opponent not being able to knock down any of my players there. Apart from the centaur. So that's a good result for me, removing his claw piece. Not permanently, but uh, just KOing him, that's definitely made my job a little bit easier now. trying to create my cage here so this piece I'm guessing will go here yeah so we're nicely in a cage yes this guy can stand up and blitz that corner but then at least the ball carrier is not getting blitzed and like we've seen in previous turns I can punch him it also gives a, a nice little hit potentially from my claw piece here on his chaos warrior so he'd probably think twice about that maybe so yeah doesn't decide to blitz that corner with that player chaos dwarfs cages are quite hard to actually break into because of all the block and especially when you've got a lot of guard as well as the season goes on that can that can be quite hard to break however you can tie them up quite easily they haven't got naturally high strength. I've managed to get my ball centaur surfed and injured. Which is not great. I'm guessing I might have popped there either that. If it was a bad one. Yeah. Yeah, so 
Uh, it was just a casualty, and then I re-rolled it, and it would have been a dead, but because it was just a, a badly hurt, he joins the uh, the subs bench. I'm not with the claw piece being off the field. I'm not too scared of this team uh, in terms of they haven't got they haven't got many kill skills. So I didn't think that was a bad shout to actually just apothecary the um, the ball centaur to keep him active for the next drive. I need the strength advantage. So a lot of his players are on this side of the pitch. That's why I'm sweeping up around here. Getting another injury is definitely helping. It's a bad one. It's a uh, minus strength, so that is a dead beastman. That's not a beastman that you'd want to keep particularly, I want to thought. He's unskilled, so you just got to sack them and get on with it, really. And even the hobgoblins are getting in on the, get on the action, knocking people out. So I've got the numbers game here, so I'm pretty confident at this point that I can just keep my cage rolling now. He's going to struggle to. Um, he's going to struggle to stop me. But yeah, he manages to knock the ball carrier down. was unfortunate for me but again he's given me plenty of guys to punch now So I pushed him there, presumably to yeah allow the hobgoblin to get up. So it looks like Brody's going for the pickup. Yeah, secures it and runs away. the extra GFI there just to make it awkward for this player coming across I'm presuming one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so that'd be two GFIs. He's got a dodge through a tackle zone to do that though. So my opponent's got no re-rolls now. That was all he could do. Blitz with the Hobgoblin, uh, basically because I couldn't get the uh, the Dwarf there without doing some GFIs. And the attrition is definitely starting to stack up in my favour. He's got six guys off the pitch at this point, so it is, this half is not looking good. So I'm just trying to put as much hurt on his team as possible now. Slightly risky. Um, yeah, the the reason I did that is because I know that he can't get anybody to support there, and he'd have to do the two die uphill block. Uh, I'm trying to stall out so I score on this last turn. Running the player to attack from that angle, so if I only got a push, I could push him here or here, 
and uh, free up the ball carrier. I've got re-rolls in the bank, so that's why I'm risking these blocks on turn eight. And now I decide to go for the score. And that is 1-0, leaving the chaos one turn to try and uh, respond in this half with half their players off the pitch. It's not looking good. And they don't get any back from the KOs. Just feeding him some uh, hobgoblins on the line. Don't want to get any high value pieces killed. I'm not particularly bothered if I lose one of these uh, because the, the attritional battle is definitely in my favour anyway. And uh, even if I'd lost sort of two of those, it wouldn't have been terrible for me. Immediately uses his reroll. He's trying to uh, get some star player points on his uh, Chaos Warrior. I'd suggest for that. Not quite sure why he decided to blitz there, but he did. So that's the end of the half. One nil to me. Does he get any of his players back? Two. But one Chaos Warrior stays out. That's massive. So he's two Chaos Warriors out for this drive. One injured and one knocked out. Feeding him the hobgoblins because the claw piece is back on the pitch. So I don't really want him to get too many hits on my armor 9 guys. I'm protecting the ball centaurs here, knowing that they'd be prime target for that claw hit on a blitz. Another re-roll for my opponent. Cheering fans, the ball lands very close to his players. I'm not too sure why my opponent was sitting up so deep here. That's a very, very deep setup. You could get away with being here and you can still run all the way back. I guess he's wanting to make quicker progress up the field. By not having to run back to run forward, he can just pick up the ball and come forward. I guess that's his logic, but I've not really seen many chaos coaches do a deep setup like that. Fails to pick up the ball, uses his free reroll, uh, but still fails. So I can I can put quite a lot of pressure on him now because his his wings are completely exposed. He's got a Chaos Warrior out on a limb here. Getting the claw hit on the warrior. Centaur charges forward to put pressure. I don't risk the extra go for it because he used the short feet on the first one. And I'm just making it so he can't get any he can't get any two died blocks there. Apart from that one. Which is why it was the player with a block that was put there, but he managed to uh, to get lucky and break out of it anyway. So just trying to outmuscle him a bit there. My 
opponents obviously responding to the threat of the ball centaur by trying to get the ball this way but dropping the ball there is not very good for him now I'm pretty sure with this one two three four five six seven eight nine so I can score so I'm pretty sure that's what I'm thinking about doing blitzing that guy and then picking up the ball in the end zone and scoring. It's worth the attempt. To go 2-0 up. With the attrition that he's suffering. And again, claw, punching claw. And stunning him. So here we go, here we go for the blitz score. Get it. And it's so have to use the re-roll for the go for it. Managed to pick up the ball and score though. So everything is going my way at the moment. A lot of coaches underestimate the um, bull centaurs, not realising how far their reach is. If they've got if they've got their toe in your opponent's half, they can pretty much reach the end zone. So I do like to send at least one into my opponent's half just to try and threaten the ball carrier, because things like what we've just seen can happen, and do happen quite regularly actually. Again, just giving the uh, claw piece a hobgoblin rather than something of high value, especially as my hog theory is gone. He's committing more to the line just to punch my players which again is leaving him quite exposed at the back. He's doing the same blitz as last time. Does work out for him. And manages to secure the ball. I'm not too sure why he went for a risky pass. I don't think that was for farming, I think that was maybe to try and get back into the game quickly, bring the ball up, but I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. So again I'm just boxing in his players. Punching his high value ones. Claw didn't manage to, to do anything there. Hobgoblins have been doing some work this game, knocking players down. So I'm going for a cheeky foul here. Because I'm that far up in attrition and 2 0 up in score, it's, it's worth doing doesn't pay off for me. Brody is sent off. Again my opponent going for some strange plays. Why he went for the pass there rather than uh, rather than just the handoff I don't know and um, he's immediately punished. Now got a ball centaur that is in range here. Uh, this one, one, two, three, four. Can contact as well. Unlucky with the double skulls there, but 
but I have been getting a lot of the luck in this game, so I can't really complain. armor break there. Some centaurs going up to harass. So just tagging everybody so they are going to have to commit a blitz. doing it one by one here because I've used my re-roll and I'm waiting for sure sure feet so I would have stopped as soon as sure feet had gone there fortunately the uh, both down I came worse off there but this is not looking good for him back there there's a very strong chance that I'm gonna be able to get his ball Yes, manages to run away. So. Why well, the camera didn't follow that, but that's claw on claw. So my opponent's left that ball carrier. Uh, sorry, that guy there to, in effect, protect the ball carrier because it means that I've got to either dodge away and blitz, or I've got to knock him down to make a longer blitz here. It's probably the best position that he could have done without, you know, maybe freeing up a player and getting it down here, but then again, I could just mug him, so it's probably the safest position. So I managed to knock this player down, clear him out of the way, and he is stunned now, so this guy is on his own. Managed to only push him, but unfortunately we don't score safeties in this game, eh? is attempting some elf rubbish or elf BS as it's known in the trade manages to get away he's gonna go for the Hail Mary but unfortunately for him fortunately for me he rolled a one and scattered at his feet hit there. The potential receiver's now tagged, so the attempted pass is going to be a lot harder. And now we go for a blitz. Just the push, but clear him off the ball and cover it myself. Go for the pickup. May as well re-roll it. Managed to get it. And I'm in scoring range. And it's the score. 3-0. Who said Chaos Dwarfs are a slow team? Just the three out for my opponent, and just one out for me, so I'm still winning on the attrition. That's quite
quite a nice kick. Opponent, for some reason, decided to use a re-roll there just on that that block. With the ball being here, you're looking at a ball potentially running in and picking that up and running off of it. He manages to get the ball himself. I think he was attempting, it was a five up pass, so I think he was attempting to put it on one of these guys at the back to make it so I couldn't score again. I think that's probably the only the only logic to the play that we just saw. seen my potential thro scoring threat there and he's got rid of it knowing that these these two centaurs are one square away from from scoring again so and he knows that I can't score so turn 16 is just going to be a bit of brutality This this game, it all went wrong. Obviously, with the uh, the failed pickups on for the second score, which really really did the damage there, put the game completely out of reach for my opponent. a vanity pass with uh, a ball centaur okay so uh, let's have a look at the SPP so a uh, cast dwarf got the uh, MVP Brody scored uh, Bultar scored a couple and also uh, looks like a couple of Kaz on the ball centaur and then a Kaz on another dwarf there and uh, unfortunately my opponent only got the MVP and won um, for a completion because the uh, the casualty he caused to me was from the surf um, so there we go here's the statistics so 50% ball position to his 12% so didn't have very much at all um, I did more than double his, the amount of blocks to him um, KOs for the amount of blocks you know we're kind of on an even keel there but obviously my injuries were a lot higher but you know with with that amount of successful blocks that's not um, a terrible number uh, to achieve it was just you know it was on fairly key players um, yeah there we go Okay, so that was game three. That was the first win of the season for the Chaos Dwarf team. Uh, so they're now starting to roll. Um, I don't think, uh, from the SPP, I don't think any of them would have levelled at this point. Uh, possibly Bultar may have. Uh, so we'll have to check back in the next game to see uh, if there are any level-ups. But I'll obviously let you know about that. 
Um, so that's it anyway, so thanks for watching guys. Um, remember to subscribe if you haven't already done so and leave us a like on the video, it really helps out. And click the bell so you don't uh, miss any of the future content that we upload. Um, I am trying to do one of these videos at least every week, uh, usually on a Monday. This one's a little bit later admittedly, but uh, there will be another one up uh, next week definitely. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.